Welcome to a tech episode of Tailoring Talk with me, Bobby, joined by Emily. Say hi, Em. She doesn't speak English. And John. How are you, John, first of all? It's been a while. It has been a while. I am um, both tired but also refreshed, having been away a lot in the summer. Yeah, me too. Although, I mean, I'm fighting... You know, every, all the stress that comes with work. I'm trying to maintain my Zen master status at the moment. The backlog. Getting the backlog. there. Yeah, of like things. Exactly. So there comes a moment in every Apple keynote, and we just had glow time a couple of hours ago. The full Apple event. There comes a moment where one of us says, that's it. I'm waiting for the next version of this phone. But then a killer feature is announced and one of us does a U-turn. But we will talk about that soon. So leading up to this event, were you excited or meh? I'd I'd gone into it knowing that I wasn't going to be buying anything this year round. And I'll tell you later on why. There's a good reason why I'm not. Yeah, I think because there were so many rumours flying around about AirPods and the AirPods Max weren't going to be announced and, you know, they'd leave it for later in the year and then it might be a more major update, et cetera, et cetera. So I wasn't really too bothered because knowing that the iPhone 15, which we're both on... No, I'm not. ...was going to be... A... Oh, you're not? No, no, no. I'm, I'm still rocking the 13 Pro. Hmm. I don't even okay. have Dynamic Island, Bobby, at the moment. Shame. No, no, I, okay. I, try, I try and do uh, an upgrade every four years, so it's really worth it. Um, and I am on my third year now um and i am very very tempted but there is uh one particularly strong reason why i'm going to wait until the 17 it's okay. nothing to do with super th- thin designer phones either because that won't be the pro model next yeah year. but um, okay anyway about this year yeah hmm. fine so you're rocking uh iphone 13 yep. i'm rocking for work of 15 pro max and a 15 pro personal And then my wife is rocking a 14 Pro. So she wants Apple intelligence. So she's really due for an upgrade. I don't have to upgrade. And I've gone and got mixed feelings following the event. There was a point, you know, if we did a predicted interest curve, it was like flatline, flatline, flatline. Then it peaked at one point. And now I've kind of gone back to flatline again. But let's go from the top. Um, We will whiz through the first few announcements um, I actually missed the Apple Watch announcement um, because <laughs> I was, well, I was on YouTube waiting for the thing to start. Um, but you have to refresh the screen when it actually starts. It doesn't just it didn't just start playing for me. So um, you know it's six fifteen, and I thought I know usually they're a couple of minutes late, but fifteen minutes late? Come on! That's why um, I was making up some crazy things to see if I can catch you out ahead of time. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that's why you were messing with me. (laughs) Okay, so Apple Watch Series 10 was announced. Hard to believe it's 10 years since the original Apple Watch was launched. Um, I remember vividly unboxing mine. Um, I can't remember what I got, though. I think it was a stainless steel. It was slow as anything. Um, But... uh, Apple Watch Series 10 has been launched. The headline is Thinstant Classic, which I'm guessing means, because I'm literally catching up on this live as we record this, I'm guessing it means it's the bigger display and thinnest watch ever. Biggest display, thinnest design, they call it. Thinnest design. Right. Okay. I couldn't tell. I'm looking at it now, and then obviously when I edit the video for everybody watching on YouTube, I'll, I'll put all this stuff in. Um... But, it, yeah, I can't really see that it looks that much different. They've got a comparison with the Series 7, 8, and 9. Uh, if you go to the website, which you can now, all of the new stuff is on there. Mm-hmm. Well, I say new. I use that word very loosely. We'll also talk about that. Um, and it looks like it's maybe a millimetre thinner. But it's, it's, it's not much. It's like maybe less than the width of the screen glass thinner. Uh, so, yeah, so it I'm, might I'm make playing, a difference. Bobby, I'm playing with the slider tool on the website. 
Mm. And I don't know if there's a mistake or anything, but there's no, there's no difference when you slide it across at all. Oh, be... that must be a mistake. I've I've got a difference on mine. There's I'm definitely a difference. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, it, I, I can see now. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, there is it is definitely thinner. Different. It is thinner. Um, I mean, it, I, I quite like the, the the look and the design of it. I think um, they've tried to uh, make the uh, senses a little bit more concave in the back of the watch, although it doesn't look like that very much on this. Um, but I think what they're doing is because the display is bigger than the ultra. Is they're, they're they're spreading out the workings so they can bring the workings in from beneath. So it's like rolling out, yeah, you know, rolling out your dough a little bit more. So you've got the same matter, but you're making it wider and thinner rather than taller and fatter, which is you know clever yeah. enough. And they've got this fancy wide angle OLED display, which gives you a bit more screen as well, so you can kind of see it more from different angles, which is clever. So, so the same Series Ten has the largest screen area of any Apple Watch, 75% more screen area than Series 3, up to 30% more than 4, 5, 6, and SE. And when they say of any Apple Watch, does that include the Ultra? Yeah, if the screen's larger than the Ultra. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm, yeah. And they did a comparison in the video. Uh, right. And it was, I mean, it wasn't, ma- it was, it was visibly bigger, but it wasn't massively bigger, to be honest. Okay. Um, I might have to have a look at that, and I'll explain why. In, yep. in a second. Um, okay. Uh, titanium finishes now. I bet they're bloody expensive. Uh, um, and we've got three yeah, I mean, colours. I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to think of the features in the watch that, that make make it more, you know, the, the, the hooks that make it more desirable than your current model. Because that's what Apple does. They try and find things that make you want to buy the new model. Yeah. But I'm I, guessing it's mostly in, in the watch OS rather than the actual yeah. watch itself. I think it is. I mean, it's. It, uh, I like the fact that because they've got a brighter display and a more power fi- power efficient chip inside, um, they can make the um, always on display. You know, where it's on standby, uh, refresh every second now rather than every minute, and that's quite a jump. That's, that is quite mm. a jump. But it means now they're designing new um, watch faces specifically for the always on display on the Series Ten that work with that standby so it looks even more like your watch is always on and they had a, a kind of a watch face that was like numbers with liquid filling it up like like the um the, the diving app um that's cool yeah so the color you talk about the colors they've got jet black rose gold and silver aluminum or as we say in the uk aluminium um yeah, yeah i mean i'd always go for the jet black um you know nice but uh better speakers you can actually use your watch as a speaker for your audio which is interesting I'd like to know if that if that will be because the speakers are better, or if it's an OS thing, will it work on our older watches, or you know, our, the ultras that we have? Um, you won't know until Series eighteen comes out. Really, we an OS Watch S eleven comes out for these things. But uh, yeah, I see what they've done. They've done away with stainless steel, haven't they, and replaced yeah. it with titanium. It's lighter, right? I get yeah. it. Okay, yeah, um, I, I would. I would, having had aluminium watches before. I would always go stainless steel or now titanium because I just found that they were much more durable, yeah. especially if in stainless steel, if you went for like a gold or that sort of deep black, anything where the stainless steel had been treated because then it, it had to go through an anodization process which strengthened the metal. But now it's titanium, fine. Um, I'm so, so the reason I'm going to think about this is because, you know, I had an accident a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, on my bike and my watch ultra is looking a little bit worse for wear to be fair the casing on the watch is pretty much i know it is scratched actually it's got almost a little bit of a dent and a scratch and then the edges are scratched and there's scratches on the glass and it still works fine it's just it looks a little bit tatty on my wrist, which yeah. if I didn't do what I do as a day job, wouldn't really be an issue. His but it kind of looks now. a bit... Clicking in there, folks, just so you know. Yeah. But depending on what the battery life is on this thing, so I might I might wait until we get the sort of iFixit teardowns and stuff in the coming weeks before I do it. But I might step away from an Ultra and go back to a regular watch and get a Titanium Watch 10. Well, I mean, I mean, in terms of your life, you know, the, the, as you use it in the day to day life, the fact it has a more efficient charging core inside gives you 
um, faster charging. So you can charge it to 80% in battery in 30 minutes. That's really cool. I presume with the new chip, it will give you, and the uh, you know the more efficient chip, it will give you more battery life. And I haven't got you probably you might have it on the on the website, but the um, the battery life is probably longer on that. Um, uh, we want I want to talk about battery wi- life, battery wife, battery life across the board. Yeah. Um, they on uh, okay, so they do say here. Up to 18 hours. Yeah. Up to 36 hours in low power modes. Right, okay. So it's half the battery life of an Ultra, essentially, still. Yeah. And I don't, then, I don't know about you, Bobby. I, I would find it really hard to go back from the battery life I have now with the Ultra, which is just brilliant. It's so good. I think because, I'm, because my watch, maybe I'm using the cellular thing on it. So I find that I'm pretty much charging my watch almost every day to day and a half anyway. Um, so I still have that thing where I'm, you know, not, admittedly not as much as when I had a non-ultra watch, yeah. but I'm still charging the watch. I feel like I'm putting it on the charger at some point every single day. You're not so, tempted. so the battery thing's not... Are you not tempted then by the, the new Jet Black Ultra 2? That's the only no, thing because... in this whole keynote that I was most tempted by was the Ultra 2 in Jet Black. What a beautiful looking watch that is. It, yeah, you're right. It looks gorgeous, but it's it's a, it's not even an iterative upgrade. They've just changed the color of it. There's yeah. there's nothing technically better about it. It looks beautiful. And and that, I made did make a note of that Milanese loop as well, because yeah. that is I mean, lovely. They spent a lot of time, like, slow-mo in 4K 120, I imagine. Because the whole the whole keynote was shot on iPhone, zooming past yeah. that strap with all the you could see all the glints of sort of anodized glints on each link. I thought that was proper Apple onanism going on there. Um, yeah, but yeah, you're right. There's, there's, I mean, I mean, I've got an ultra. Have you got an ultra too? I've got no. I've got the original ultra. Yeah, so have I. So if you did get it, you get the ultra two, which will be um, part of this sleep apnea detection upgrade. You won't be able to do sleep apnea detection on the ultra one. I don't need a sleep apnea well, detection. I do, I've got a I wife think. for that. Yeah. I've got a wife for that. She'll well, punch I mean, me in the side of the head. You're snoring. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> well, ditto. <laughs> but um, but that, that, that's the only little pinch, really, is knowing that the, one, the Ultra I've got now is probably not going to have all the upgrades, that, you know, the next new features coming out. And that's what they want you to do. They want you to, to buy again. Um, but the, the Ultras, you know, they're too they, – they're such good watches. They last longer. And also they're, they're a lot more expensive. That the upgrade cycle of those should be a little bit longer, really. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I mean, was... the thing if if I was going to get rid of this ultra and change it, then you're probably right. I probably sh- would look at the ultra too, because I'm just looking at the price of a titanium watch ten with a Milanese band, at the larger size, and that's eight hundred quid, which is the same price as the ultra mm-hmm. too. So then what do you do? I don't know how much I would get as a trade-in with this watch, so I'll need to find that out, but I'm not going to do that now. because You want to go to an Apple store, see your friends at the Apple store, like your local one, get them to put on the Series 10 with a black strap, Milanese strap, and put the Ultra 2 on in, in black and just see which looks better on your arm. Wear a suit when you yeah. do it, you know, and, and go in and have a look. Yeah. That's what I would do if you're going to go either way. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, um, the Series 10 is a really good step. It's another good iteration. Uh, it's a step in the right direction. I I, I think that Apple, re- I don't know how they're going to do it because they they're always stuck in their ways. I just think the, the general design of the Apple Watch, the non-Ultra watches, it's just a bit old now, you know? And there were rumours of new yeah. going to be new strap mountings to allow for a change in watch design. And usually what Apple do is they'll they'll start doing that change in watch design alliteration earlier so you get used to it uh, when they did the um the head, remove the headphone jack they did it the stage before i think when the iphone 10 was the first one with that headphone wasn't it and they did it a step before the iphone 9 just to get people to complain about it then so when the series 10 came out it was the complaints had dulled down so i kind of i was expecting a change in the watt strap mounting the only change is that they're using titanium mounts so i don't i just it, yeah i mean yay new s10 chip in the, in the series 10 uh, new new neural, I don't know, network to suppress b- 
background noises when you're making phone calls on it. But some new faces, which I hopefully will come to all the all the watches, apart from the ones that work with the standby mode. It just didn't feel like a massive jump, did it? Really? No. Um, I mean, to the important bit, which is anyone who's watching, who's thinking about getting a new watch, if you've got a watch ultra and it's in great nick, mm. do nothing. Yep. It's probably my advice. And if you've got a watch, normal watch going up to maybe Series 7, you might now, three years later, be starting yeah. to feel like the battery is not lasting as long, is not holding its charge. So maybe it's worth taking a look at the Series 10 and having a little cheeky upgrade. But I'd say if you've got a watch Series 8 or 9, there's no point whatsoever. And I'd also wait and see what OS 11 features you can't get on your watch and decide do i want them that much that i need to upgrade because I, yeah. I really like the idea of offline maps on on the watch you know s11 but will that work i'm assuming it'll work on the ultra because it's, it's only a couple of generations away but who knows yeah i'm looking at that watch ultra 2 in black with that yeah. black milanese loop thing which is 899 so you're paying 100 quid extra for that metal loop but it does look really, really nice. And you'd still be able to use your existing black strap with that, wouldn't you, anyway? I haven't got a black strap. I've Have got a uh, Midnight ocean. ocean loop. Yeah, but I mean, that's that would still work with it, wouldn't it? Yeah, but I wouldn't want to use it with that. No. So, I might I might look at eBay my watch Ultra. Yeah, maybe. Because if I could get, if I could get, so they say on trading you can get up to three hundred and twenty-five quid. So I'd assume with a few scratches, I might only get about two seventy-five. Yeah, that wouldn't be enough to make me upgrade because that's paying an extra five hundred quid or whatever. Yeah, but if I could get, I don't know, five hundred quid on eBay for this one, would I pay two ninety-nine to upgrade? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, might give that a little go. We'll see. Who knows? Um, Next. Next, 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 next was AirPods. Let's talk about AirPods. So, um, (laughs) AirPods Max. You want to go straight Should we talk about, yeah, let's let's deal with the Max first. Let's get it out of the way. AirPods Max. Yeah, let's get it out of the way. anodized purple elephant in the room. Yes. Um, I... I was hoping that there wouldn't be an AirPod Max announcement today because my my instinct was that if they announce AirPod Max today, it's going to be an iterated upgrade. They're going to change the port. We might get some new colors. And hey, presto, that's exactly what freaking happened. So we've got new colors. We've got Midnight, uh, which I'm not sure what difference that is from... Um, I'm just going to have a look on the website here. From the existing Space Gray. Oh, it's like a really dark blue. A bit like, oh, it's the same colour as my MacBook. Yeah. Uh, oh, that would be a reason to get them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> that would be a reason to get them, though. You've got um, midnight, you've got starlight, you've got blue, you've got purple, and you've got orange. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't, are the, is the orange the pur- and the purple, are they the new colours? Or they is it a whole range of new colours? They're all new. So right. the midnight, So because previously it was space grey, which was... Black, pretty What much. is the difference between Space Grey and Midnight? Is it darker, marginally? Midnight is darker, yeah. and it's got a little bit of a blue tinge to it. Um, s- yeah, Starlight, previously, you had white and silver. Right, um, okay, yeah. I, anyone listening that is thinking about buying AirPods Max, do not get a light... Uh, do not get a set of those headphones that has a light-coloured headband because it discolours like anything. Right. Looking at these new colours, if I was going to get one of them, I would get either the blue or the midnight. Can you? I wouldn't even... Can you mix and match their bands and the um, the headphones? I think you can, can't you? You can buy the ear cups separately. So yeah. you could get orange ear cups with a midnight... That's quite cool. ...outer. Which is or quite cool, but it's very expensive. But it's very expensive. What about hundred quid right? a cup or something? Yeah, so seventy quid or something. Yeah. But here's the thing: so that mesh band on the AirPods Max, and this is, you know, I've I've owned two pairs of these things, uh, and subsequently got rid of them. The sound quality on these headphones is brilliant. Yeah. 
What I'm really upset about is that I've got a pair of Beat Studio Pros, which now you can get on really good deals. When they first came out, they were about 350 quid. I think now you can get them for 299 standard, even if you keep an eye out for some sales like Amazon deals and stuff. You can get them as low as 2 225 um, And they're fully compatible with Apple devices. You can use them with Android as well. But they do all of the Apple, most of the Apple ecosystem stuff. But the thing with the, Be- the Beat Studio Pro, they're lighter. The carry case for them is brilliant. Mm. Um, if anyone's watching at this stage and wants me to do a little video on my Beat Studio Pro now that I've had them for a, a few months, then I'm more than happy to do a quick one on those. But the case is brilliant. Um, and they come with a USB-C cable, which enables you to listen to lossless audio. Through your iPad. Through your iPad, through your iPhone, whatever. Um, through your MacBook or your iPad, sorry, not the iPhone. Um, otherwise, these, otherwise. These don't do these, that. Yeah, this is the solution I've come up with, which is on audio, I've got a DAC. It's a DAC converter that converts analog to USB-C, so I can listen to lossless on my iPad. But that's a ridiculous thing to have to do. Yeah, but I mean, why should I? When I, could buy, when I can buy a pair of... I, I, I have... A pair of Bose um, QC Ultras. So they do lossless. The Beat yeah. Studio Pro do lossless. God knows how many other flagship headphones do lossless. Why the hell don't the Apple headphones? You know, you can't... It's ridiculous in this day and age that you can't use a premium pair of headphones that cost 550 quid with your iPhone that Apple has Apple Music, that Apple keep touting lossless audio and so on, and I can't even get lossless audio with the AirPods Max, and I know there will be audio fills watching and listening to this saying, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference anyway, but still, it's, it's the knowing. principle of the thing. Yeah. I mean, It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, even if, even if Apple were to come up with some kind of parallel technology to the PS Link, you know, because they have a, the, the PlayStation have a proprietary technology for their headphones, the PS5, to their Pulse Elites, which gives better sound. That's how they've got it work, worked around it. They've just said, we're not going to be um, a headphone jack headphone anymore, which has annoyed a lot of people be able to, wanting to be able to use them with headphone jacks for their switches and things. Um, I think we live in a world, Bobby, where everyone has multiple sets of headphones these days, which is a shame. But, you know, the, the AirPods Max, if they had done something new with them, made them, I mean, are they made out of aluminium at the moment? Yeah, yeah, they still are. So you couldn't make they, them out of they, titanium? Would they be just as light in titanium? Or they'd be more expensive? But could you change the design? Because they'd be stronger, so you could make you could use less metal, maybe a, a change the way the mesh works. Just a, a new material to just adapt the design, make it slightly thinner or lighter on the head. So you'd see, visibly, you'd, people would know, all oh, these are the new versions, so you get, get that kudos. Um but I just think, I wonder if they they have a low priority with the AirPods Max. Don't know. Seems that way. I mean, they they are popular. I mean, when I was on holiday, More I mean, there were so many, ki- so many kids walking yeah. around with, with them over their heads on the beach and stuff. Crazy. But, you know, when you look at the specs, and again, you can compare that, you compare them in terms of the connectivity, lossless audio, um, the, the listening time. Is, is way behind a lot of other headphones now. The smart case, they haven't shown it, but it, it probably is still the bra, oh, which is. is ridiculous. It is. People were it's predicting a change in case as well, and that's not happened. Bluetooth connectivity. A lot of headphones are on 5.3 now, I think. These are still on wireless 5. <sighs> anyway, so it's nuts. Uh, if they if they'd actually made some changes to the hardware, I'd have jumped back in and got them because yeah. for just that Apple ecosystem, seamless and the sound quality on them is great. Don't get me wrong, but if you look at the specs, not though, dropping... probably, compared to the AirPods Pro Two, which we which we I mean I'm, I, I don't know I'm using the AirPods Pro Two now for this for this podcast. Me the, too. There's more uh, no, feature, not. There's it's more features in the AirPods Pro Two than the AirPods Pro Max. Yeah. And also, this is still using the H1 chip, so they've yeah. not actually changed the hardware at all, apart from the USB-C port. Yeah. You know, if I already owned a pair of the Lightning port ones, I, I probably would get rid of them and get these yeah. for the USB-C because I'm USB-Cing everything. Yeah. But um, no, nah, I'll stick with the Beats. Yeah. 
I mean, I've, I've, I've spent enough time talking about AirPods Pro Mac because AirPods yeah, Mac exactly. Is, I've spent too much yeah. time there. Yeah, but I um, think AirPods think, Pro. Sorry, Carol. Sorry. sorry, I'm very excited about this. this I was, was going to move. I, I was going to yeah. move on. AirPods yeah. Pro. Not much to talk about apart from a feature that's very important to you. Yeah. Um, so it's a software update, which is one of the benefits of this H2 chip mm. is that they can, and, and that I like from a sustainability point of yeah. view is that they can keep adding these amazing new features. I'm sure there's a ceiling at some point, but still. So the AirPods Pro are not changing, but they will get a software update very soon, which enable you to use your AirPods Pro as uh, as hearing aids. And you'll also be able to conduct a at-home hearing test with them as well. So Apple spent some time talking about the fact that hearing health was something that needed to be taken more seriously. And apparently some statistic, I can't remember what it was, two thirds of adults that have a hearing problem go misdiagnosed. Well, now you will be able to, 80%, 80%, right? You'll be able to diagnose yourself. And if you've got a problem, you'll then obviously be able to go see your doctor or whatever you see for hearing loss. Um, But then you'll also be able to use the AirPods Pro as hearing aids, which to you was, was something that you were very, very... Um, pleased to hear yeah. about John. I mean, my hearing. I, I, I have people telling me all the time that they notice me missing things a lot more. I work in a noisy environment. I used to work in bars for many years. I work. I work in a school, and I was really impressed with just the three tiers they're trying to address hearing. So they went for prevention, which is a hearing protection. So you can actually use your um, AirPods. Pro- and people have been doing this in concerts and things, but now properly. You can use them as earplugs, but earplugs that still let the sound through, but it's a dynamic range that allows you to listen to things clearly, excuse me, but without damaging your ears. And they've got their awareness, awareness tier, which is the hearing test and being aware of whether your ears are working or not. And then you've got this sort of um, uh, sort of the hearing aid thing, which is their final tier. And so it's prevention, awareness and protection. And I think that's, I think it's really clever. Um, clinical grade as well. Now, is that clinical grade in America? I'm not so sure if it, that covers the rest of the world, but if it's been okay by the Americans, I'm pretty confident it's, it's, it's fairly helpful. Now, whether it's as good as those highly expensive bespoke fitted to your own ear canal hearing aids that, that you know properly deaf people have to use, I doubt it. I think it's geared to more towards you know older people like myself who are starting to miss things in conversations. The example they gave was this um, mother who was at her son's uh, her birthday and her son was giving her an address and you could kind of hear it from her point of view before she put her headphones in and it was all sort of mumbled and muffly and then she put them in and it was all nice and clear. Now, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to testing this. Um, for me, my problem is selective hearing. I have much, I find it much harder to hear discern sounds in noise and i wonder if these will help with that i don't know um the only other thing i was thinking about is is socially or you know societally how are we going to feel about everybody always having their headphones plugged in because visually if i see someone walking towards me with headphones in, i'm going to assume they're listening to music do you see so i don't know how yeah, to but... affect society as such but I don't know about where you are, but certainly where I am in London, I'm sure you've noticed whenever you've been to London that most people are walking around with headphones in or on anyway. So it is normal. Yeah. I mean, I have turned off um, my adaptive for a while because um, every time I, I don't know what it is about the adaptive hearing, but when I'm listening to music or podcast, I burp. I don't know why it's burping, but when I burp, it turns off my audio. (laughs) It's really annoying. Mm. You know, it's slow to react when I talk to someone. When I burp, straight away it just turns off, which is really weird. Um, yeah. So I have turned that off, but I might turn it back on again. So, but yes, I was very impressed with those. I mean, the 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 AirPods, the non pros, were a bit confusing. It looks like they've they've created like two parallel tiers here. Well, I was just going to very quickly before yeah. we move on to the regular sure. AirPods, Sorry, which, yeah. quite frankly, I don't care about. Um, but some people listening might. Yeah. Um, also, with this software update on the AirPods Pro 2s, you will get voice isolation, which will improve the quality of your phone calls when it's loud or it's windy. Um, using advanced computational audio, they will reduce background noise while isolating and clarifying the sound of your voice for the person you're speaking to. Particularly useful for people like me that like to walk the dog and have phone conversations at the same time. 
Um, and then a new hands-free Siri experience is also coming to AirPods Pro 2 with Siri interactions where you can simply nod your head yes or gently shake your head no when Siri asks you if you'd like to answer an incoming call, hear a text or manage a notification. And, you know, that is really handy, especially when I'm cycling. I've, we, we talked about this actually on a previous episode um, you know, I, I end up really shouting <laughs> at my AirPods and they don't do anything because with the wind noise and everything. Yeah. So having gesture control would be absolutely brilliant. I'm looking forward to that. You look less like a loon in elevators, won't you? Um, actually, yeah. I think that coupled with the the new, in iOS 18, the new, um, which we'll come to later on, the new text, Siri text, where you can type in your Siri commands. So not only can you nod and, nod and shake your head so you don't sound like a loon, you can stop shouting at your phone as well. Uh, and again, yeah. that will be useful if you're cycling or in a noisy environment, won't it? So mm-hmm. they've got a plan here, yeah. haven't they? They're trying to make this, this, this these devices even more usable and not more desirable. Yeah, well, we think they do. Yeah. Um, regular AirPods get some updates. They've changed the design. Apparently, they've analysed over 5 million different ear shapes to refine the design so that it fits in more people's ears. I don't have a Tragus. They won't fit in my ears. They'll keep bloody falling out. Because the AirPods are an so that, so the way to distinguish the two in terms of fit, the AirPods Pro are in ear design, so they'll go kind of a little bit inside your ear canal. I don't know why I'm grabbing these; these are the Be- Beats Fit Pro, um, and the AirPods kind of sit just outside of the yeah, ear canal, so they're more an on ear in here yeah. in ear headphone. Um, but we get two versions of those. We get the AirPods Four, which have got new features i can't i need to look them up i can't remember well, what they one are with ac- and, active noise cancellation one without yes which obviously is the chip inside it the h2 chip so i guess one is going to get the chip and one's going to get an earlier chip the h2 chip gives the the new acoustic architecture but uh and all the all the features are pretty much of the pro the transparency the adaptive audio the conversation awareness and so on but they don't get the um hearing test features because the chip's the chip's not quite good. I think the, the Pro is the, is it a Pro the. It's got the so this has got the H2 chip, which I thought was the H2 was in the AirPods Pro, Pro as well. Maybe, maybe they are, yes. So what, I don't know why. What, I mean, I mean, what the, the difference is with the iPhone, the the, the the AirPods Pro are the health capabilities that you could, you don't get with the AirPods standard the fours. I think also even if you got regular AirPods with active noise cancellation it's not going to be anywhere near as good as it is on the airpods pro yeah because of the design because they don't sit in your ear canal as opposed to you know these just kind of sit slightly off but some people prefer that some people don't like things in their ear no, I know. um you know i've got no choice i have to go for in because I've, otherwise yeah. they'll just fall out of my head i think they've updated the stem as well with the force sensor on it so yeah so it's it's I mean, they're, they're, they're almost kind of converging, aren't they, in terms of the way they work and the, the features. Yeah. But you've got AirPods 4 doesn't, the standard version is $129, which I presume is going to go 129 quid, doesn't have, the, is, active yeah. noise, doesn't have the active noise cancellation. So yeah. they're kind and of if you want, cheapest. If you want standard. active noise cancellation, you pay £50 pounds more. Yeah. But here's another tailoring talk tip, listeners and viewers. Um, if you keep an eye on places like Amazon for the AirPods Pro 2, um, they do sometimes drop dramatically down to sub 200 quid. Um, and if you don't mind the more sort of in-ear uh, ergonomics, then that is definitely a better buy than the AirPods 4, in my personal opinion. I don't um, think, don't, I don't think the, the, the entry-level AirPods have spatial audio either. I no, don't... I'm wrong. I'm wrong. So these, the stand, they do. No, have, they do now. They do. They do now. But I think the AirPods Pro Two has two times better active noise cancellation and even better spatial audio. If that makes sense. So it's basically they're both H2. I don't know why then they can't do the same, but there's something better about the Pros. Uh, but you know, we're 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 picking this apart and we're finding this confusing. So the consumer, the average Joe. Is going to find this. Well, which one do I buy? Do I buy the cheapest? Do I buy? Oh, so you know, two yeah, times. There's pros and cons. Pro I think level. you know those. No, it's confusing. Those, 
there's that old adage about a confused customer never buys. Yeah. And certainly the range bloating out like this creates yeah. that problem. But it also creates a solution in a way um, because there are more price points for yeah. people to access at different areas. Because not everybody can either afford to or sees the value in spending 250 quid on a pair of in-ear headphones, mm. right? So now you've got an option at 179 if you need a bit of noise cancellation. Because before, the choice was you either got AirPods or you got AirPods Pro. Now, if you were someone that commutes a lot on trains, uh, subway, tubes, cars... Sorry, I have to use both terminology because we've got so many American listeners. Um the regular AirPods are useless. You can't hear anything with them with the amount of background noise. So now having that intermediate option where, you know, going from 129 to 250 quid, so double the price, just so that you can hear shit when you're on to and from work or school or college or whatever, you know, for a student, for example, might be a lot of money. Um, so yeah. having that sort of in-between option might not be a bad thing. And also and then you can actually hear your podcast and stuff. Well, yeah, well, we're approaching Christmas. Um, it's possible that the cheapest ones will be good for kids, you know, and for sort of my my first AirPods, you know, and all that sort of thing. And as you, and you're right, they'll they'll hit a certain element of the market that probably would have been hesitant to buy them at all. So yeah, yeah, fair play. On on to the juicy stuff now. So we're going to talk about iPhone before we move on to iPhone 16 Pro. So iPhone 16, we have some new. Mm, some quite lovely looking colours because the yeah. iPhone 15s, the colours were a bit washed out and a bit pastely and not that I'm interested in a regular phone but um, they definitely didn't interest me at all. Um, so yeah, the pink was quite striking. And you've got... You've got I'm um, just going to pull them up here. Yeah, you've got um, Ultramarine, which is the blue. You've got uh, Teal, which is the green. Mm-hmm. You've got... There's no fancy name for it. Pink. For the pink, you've got white, and then you've got black. The whole colour, the colours on phones thing. I mean, I, I have a green iPhone 13. I've, I, I very rarely live the caseless life because I, on my phone has a, um, uh, is it a Nomad? Not Nomad. What is it? Oh, a mouse case that connects to my what my mount on my bike. So I, and I tend to just keep it in its case. Um, so colours. I mean, unless, unless you like the front of your phone to be either black or white or one of those colours. Um, I, I kind of miss the 5C days where you can you mix and match with the coloured holes in the back. It was a lovely design, that, even if it was a bit of a failure. But having said that, it's really nice to see a variety of colours. The pink's, and the pink's pretty cool. And the ultramarine's actually really nice. That blue's really nice. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to say it now. This is a really good phone. This is one of their best propositions for a phone that's, you know actually quite affordable as re- as well really i mean 899 is it for the for the lowest so spec size for the so you've got two sizes of screen you've got a 6.1 inch display and then you've got the iphone 16 plus which is 6.7 inch the iphone 16 is 799 starts mm. with 128 gigs of ram yeah. um and the iphone 16 plus is 899 so 100 pounds more if you want that That's bigger exactly. screen yeah. And that also starts off at 128 gigs of RAM. 128? No, not 128 gigs of RAM. 128, 128. gigs of storage space. Uh, uh, sorry, storage. Yeah. Duh, yeah. It's late. Long day. <laughs> um, but yeah, 128 gigs of storage. Yeah. Don't, don't. We always encourage you to join in in the comments. Please don't um, comment on that. I'm just knackered. Um, sorry about that. Yeah, 128 gigs of storage. Yeah. Um, which and then to be fair, iPhone, with some, sorry, yeah, sorry, I was say, it's yeah, 128 gigs a bit shit these days. I, I really wish they would just start at 256, but which I think the Pro yeah, does. If you want yeah. it, if it does, yeah, yeah. Um, if you want to double your memory, you can pay an extra hundred quid. So, you know, and I, th- I think that's why a lot of people go for Pro phones these days because by the time you've done that, you might as well pay another hundred quid and get the yeah. Pro version of the phone. And I, I'm, um, I'm a bit confused by the chip in this because they've jumped a gen- they jumped two tiers. They've gone from 16 to 18. There's no A17. There's no A17 chip. That's right. So unless apparently it's this... being used in an iPad or something somewhere else. I don't know. But mm, the A17 is being used in something. Um, 
Yeah, the iPhone 15 Pro. Um, so they've okay. jumped past the processor that's in the iPhone 15. Yeah. Um, to the A18, which has a 16... This isn't going to mean anything to anyone, well, but no, 16 but no, core no, neural this, engine. No, no, there's this, but this is right, because very normally they'll they'll pass down the previous gen Pro chip into the entry level Pro phone. So this is you're right. This this jump in two is quite interesting. Like you, again, this is a good proposition. They're giving you more bang for your buck straight away on the phone, and I think that's because they uh, yeah. need to for the Apple intelligence. That's right. No, that's yeah. absolutely the reason why. You know, because they've up the 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 um the neural engine calls to sixteen. They've given it more bandwidth, which presumably Apple intelligence needs to do all of its running backwards and forwards and, you know, shipping video, information around. Video stuff as well. We've got, yeah. yeah, the video stuff. So we've got five core GPU. So that's up 40% in performance from the previous iPhone. Uh, six core something or other. I know, is that a six core GPU? I don't it's know. I can't read my Android. Pro. It's a five core in the A18. Yeah. But I mean, all of this is nonsense um, to, to lay people. It's like, yeah. who cares? Uh, what you care about is that from the previous gen, you're getting 30% faster performance, 30%, but using 30% less power. Um, and you can run Apple Intelligence, um, which is coming the very, very soon. Do, John, actually, as a side note, do you not think this is kind of an interesting one with Apple? Because they're releasing these new phones. And that, that really, there was so much in the keynote about Apple intelligence, all of the amazing things that you'll be able to do. But you're going to go out and you, everyone's going to be banging on a pre-order on Friday and then a week later they get their phones and they're not going to be able to do any of that new stuff. No, they're only not, going to be able to do what they're doing today. It's not It's not out for another six months, at least, the Apple intelligence. And by then, some people will be thinking of getting the, Apple, the, uh, the iPhone 17. You see, so here, here's the here's the um, thing I was mentioning earlier on about why I'm waiting. So um, I think the Pro, I have to ch- fact check this, will have eight gigs of RAM on it. Okay, which is kind of the minimum to be able to run the PCC. You know, the the um, the kind of the, the well, it's the PCC. What's the PCC stand for? It's something to do with their their private. It's the way you can you can use um, Apple Intelligence privately. Without the Japan, the Chinese, the Chinese and the Russians getting to it. Private right. cloud computing, C- computing PCC, yeah, private cloud computing. So, I I wrote what the fuck. Yeah, I think um, <laughs> I think the, the the it's the it's the eight gigs of RAM. Now, I I'm pretty certain that the seventeen will have twelve gigs of RAM, and that will allow complete on device processing. But you're not going to be using any of this, either the 8 or the 12, for six months on the 16. So you're not going to have all the features you want for half the time you have that phone if you're a year-on-year a year on year upgrader, do you see? And so I, ha- you know, I'm still on the 13, and I'm, I'm happy for a four a four generation jump, because it's kind of what I did last time. I'm happy to move up to the 17 next year, not the, the supposedly thin stylish 17, the proper pro, chunky, in your pocket, and going for all those features, because by then, Apple intelligence could have been established and used and probably a little bit maybe updated. Um, iOS 90 may may just take all that stuff and make it a bit better, but it all will also be on device because the problem I have, and the big issue I have on my phone right now is, as a side note, is I can't really use it at work anymore because I'm a teacher and uh, there are loads more limitations with GDPR and privacy. Um, and I can't even connect my phone to my work mobile work uh, Wi-Fi anymore because it, everything gets monitored. Every every I mean, they're allowed to look at everything on your phone as well. So I've just stopped doing that. And where I where I work is in the sticks. It's out there out the countryside. There's no there's not even four G. It's three G. So I'm speaking from a very personal opinion here. I would like a device that I could use at any time with Apple Intelligence, whether I am in, in a, a good connection or not. It's a bit different if you live in a city. Or well, you live in a country like, like the glorious Switzerland, which was 5G wherever you went in the mountains or in underground. But when you haven't got that um, link to the private cloud computing and you haven't got a connection and you just want to use your device wherever you are, I think it'll be a much, much better phone next year than this year. And I think this is going to be bridge- the bridging the gap Apple intelligence phone, if that makes sense. So yeah. 
I think people should be aware of that. If you're thinking of buying now, if you can afford to buy every year, yeah, go for it. You know, if you like to have that new phone every year. But if you're really keen on the Apple intelligence and all its features, you're not going to get them straight away. And possibly the next phone will be quicker, but also less reliant on ChatGPT, Google, and the private um, cloud that they're doing. So private cloud computing. So it's of all the years worth waiting for me. This is the year I'm going to wait. Um, and by by next September, my my current phone will have been paid off completely. So my upgrade is much easier, much quicker. You know. Yeah, um, you know, for me, I mean, we're probably jumping the gun a little bit here, yeah. but having an iPhone 15 Pro, I can use Apple intelligence features yeah. when they arrive anyway, so I don't really need to upgrade. Well, yeah, I'm going to use them um, on the iPad M4, the M, the M4 iPad can cope with it as well, so I'll play around with the features on my iPad. And your my, our Macs will get it as well, you know, um, because the Mac is and it's uh, even the M1 Mac, uh, the basic, and I've got the, the most the sort of the entry level one, which is the eight gig of RAM, that can still cope with it. And, and because they are fixed devices connected to a good connection, there's no problem there with the private computing cloud computing thing. It's it's, it's always going to be online, you know. So I'm going to be happy to try out the features, but not on my phone, which I, you know, day-to-day, weekdays, I hardly ever use anyway. I turn it off and put it in the drawer for most of the day. I'm using my Apple Watch more, actually, now than my, my iPhone. Um, so that's my kind of, my, my feelings on it. I have to say, Bobby, and, we, and we, we, you just mentioned Craig Federighi and his, his, his bit about the software, Uncle Craig. I had no idea where they were. It looked like they were in California. I guess that place was California. But... Um, I completely zoned out when he started talking about the Apple intelligence because I knew it wouldn't be on the phone straight away. I just wrote blah, blah, blah and got bigger and bigger blah, blahs because it was just, it was just, yeah. it washed over me. It was all the same stuff they mentioned in the last keynote. And, and Apple have done some amazing things. And you're right, the UI is lovely and it's really clever stuff. But it just, it felt almost like vaporware, really, at this stage. I think also we've been kind of Apple intelligenced out because we've been talking so much about it since June when WWDC happened. Um, You know, that none of this is new news to us at all. It's also not new features. You said it in the, the, whilst we were watching it, like, like um, the lens of stuff where you can look at things and they you know, Google have had that for five years. Yeah. I I remember sitting, um, Samsung Sadly, the first time things as well for years, aren't they? Removing yeah, I mean, I, I remember looking at um, some because we were with Carolina's father, uh, father who passed away sadly. But when he was going through his cancer treatment and stuff, we were in Spain, and I couldn't understand any of the pamphlets they were giving us. And I got my phone out, and using Google Lens, basically, I just mm. held it over the page, and it turned magically. Like in Harry Potter, it changed all of the Spanish text into English on my phone. It was amazing. Just literally in the in camera, in camera. And that was five, six years ago. I mean, you can do that in the in the iPhone app now. You can you can um, take a picture. And when you copy the text, a little translate icon appears in the corner. But the language is a lot lot more limited because I used it when I was traveling in Europe. But the languages are more limited than Google Translate. You can download all these different language packs. But yeah, so it did. It just did feel like the usual Apple Sherlocking. You know, yeah, we've seen people watching this and doing this for years. Now we're going to do it. And look, the UI, as you said, is lovely, and the whole experience is is the be- is is an industry standard. It's really good. They they're refining on everything they've seen. But it just feels like it just feels like Apple aren't really innovating. To be honest, which is a real shame. It kind yeah. of breaks your heart. Um, the only the only innovation that I really liked out of this entire keynote was I really really liked their new camera control button. That was lovely, and that's turning your iPhone into much more like a like a a, a camera feeling camera. That's right. Yeah. So camera control, which comes yeah. to all iPhones actually, mm-hmm. um, it's a button. It's an, so so now the iPhone 16 gets the action button, which is the action button was introduced on the iPhone 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max last year, which was a button where you could assign a function to it. So, for example, on my phone, I've got it assigned as the camera so that I can just very quickly, no matter what I'm doing or if the phone's in standby, I can literally just press the little button on the side of the phone and uh, and it just opens up the camera straight away. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Um, well, I mean, up that until came from the Ultra. Weeks, 
didn't it? The action button was first on the Ultra. Before yeah, it was on the Watch the Ultra. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, most people you speak to who have a 15 Pro phone have never used the action button or have very rarely used it because you're just so used to you know, swiping down and, you know, using the camera icon on your lock screen and stuff. But this, but this will but mean it's there. you can remove that camera icon from your uh, screen, which I think is a really good yeah, thing. But- good thing, because you won't accidentally touch it. And ideally, you could use the action button for your torch and remove the torch button, because I use that a lot. When I haven't, well, my phone doesn't have an action button, so I haven't used it. No, I don't know how it feels. Yeah. Um, so... That's cool, and and I love the fact that it's got this capacitors on the top, so you can have a light touch to focus and a hard. Yeah, touch so you can. So basically, the capture kind of the camera control button. It's flush to the surface, so it's surface mounted. Uh, click, you click once to launch. You click again to capture. So it's all instantaneous, pretty much. You hold to take video. Um, it has touch gestures, so you can light press for other UI features. So if you light press the first time, it brings up your zooms. If you light press again, it will bring up another little user interface, which will show you your different, um, uh, filters, you know, picture filters adjustments. and things like that. So yeah, so it's really cool, and you'll be able to sort of slide your finger along to zoom in and out and all of that sort of wonderful stuff. So that's pretty cool. So your your phone literally, you kind of use it more like we used to use traditional cameras back in the day. And then the camera itself gets a little bit of a bump. You from the iPhone 15, it's up to six times optical zoom now, where it's four times before. Um, 48 and megapixel fusion camera. No, it doesn't get a fusion camera. It's oh no, it does. It sorry, it it's got a 48 megapixel. You're right. It's got the 48 megapixel fusion trap camera, and then the ultra wide gets a little bump up to 12 megapixels. Um, 2.6 and times more light. Uh, detection so you get a bit better pictures as well no one cares about that stuff john um you could now do the close-up macro photography if you want to photograph the spots on the back of a ladybird or some shit like that um and it will also take spatial photos and videos which you can then view in your apple vision pro headset which none of you who are considering buying a regular iphone 15 will have an apple vision pro or even be dreaming about buying one um people who own the apple vision pro bobby will be buying the iphone 16 to wear as earrings whilst they use their vision pro yeah because they're so wealthy uh and then it also has the latest gen photographic styles um which we'll talk about when we talk about 16 pro in a second but as john said Overall, it's actually a really, really good phone. And I would say that if you're coming from anything older than an iPhone 15, so maybe a 13 or 14 regular, then this might be worth the consideration if there are things about your phone that are bugging you. But if there are things about your phone that you don't... If you don't ever think about your phone day to day and think there's anything about it that irritates you, save your money. Do you know what? You don't need to do anything. This might be This might be the first time I downgrade from a pro. Okay, right. So let's talk about this. So let's quickly whiz through the pro specs first of all. So mm. iPhone 16 Pro gets a little bump in dis- in screen size so it goes from 6 6.1 to 6.3 inches on the regular Pro. And the iPhone 16 Pro Max is now a 6.9 inch display. It was 6.7. They have done this by keeping the phone pretty much the same size, but the bezels are even smaller. Um, it has 120 hertz ProMotion display. So think about that, John. So does the um, other one, though, doesn't it? No, it mm. does not have ProMotion. That's, that's, so that's the same as the, the M4 iPad. That's got the 120 hertz ProMotion on it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's kind of the same as going from your iPad mini to... Basically, it's a shit display on the other one. It's not, actually. It's a very good display. But for some people, like me, once you've gone ProMotion, you can't go back. Does the 13 have ProMotion? The 13 Pro have ProMotion? Will I notice it? I think the 13 had ProMotion. It's been around for a while, hasn't it? Yeah. So Which probably, one had the always-on display first, though? That uh, was the not 14. The, not the 13. The four, I think it's the 14. The 14 had yeah. always-on. Um, so that's so what anyway. they don't have. Does the, does the 16 have always-on? No. 
Oh, the regular go, 16 so. doesn't. No, so here we go. Okay, so now we're getting to the nitty-gritty. You, going. you need Keep the going. ProMotion display with its ability to go from 120 all the way down to 1 hertz to be able to do, you know, to do the always-on. Yeah. Which is why the watches have it, because mm. they've got a very high, you know, they've refresh got... Refresh rate. A refresh rate, yeah, exactly, that thing. Um, titanium with textured matte glass back we got a new color desert and then the other colors are nothing to talk about because you've still got natural you've still got black and white um so the icon color or the halo color this year if you're into that uh, would be the desert which is pretty much it looks no different to previous golds that we've had before so it's gold thing exactly so if i do it then that's the the one i'll get here though bobby is that the Edges are no longer uh, uh, glossy silver. They're they're brushed, aren't they? They're slightly. I think a lot of people might might not like that as much. Yeah. So didn't the um, eight do that? Didn't the F and eight go to kind of rounded edges? Or was that the six? It might be the six actually. They were somewhere in the older range where they went from the sharp edges to the rounded edges, and everyone kept dropping them. And they looked like that. That like. was when you went from the five to the six, maybe something like that. Yeah. Um, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it's got it's got it looks nice. It's got nice. It's got some nice professional looking colours. Grade five titanium. Now I don't know if you noticed this, but when they mentioned the grade five titanium, they said it's the strongest. It's stronger than any other type of titanium that no that others have used, and I think that was a subtle dig at Samsung. Right. Because Samsung mixed in titanium with their recent Galaxy phone. But I think Apple are basically... So So this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to Google Grade 5 titanium. Grade 5 is the most widely used titanium alloy. It has very high strength, but relatively low ductility. I have no idea what that means. Ductility is Compared- how, you can, how you can draw out a metal into a thin wire and stretch it out. So ah, the more okay. you can well, stretch it and move it out, it, so it's easier to shape and, and form. Right. Uh, compared to pure titanium, grade 5 is much higher tensile strength and a higher yield point. Titanium grade 5 is therefore preferable when the strength is more important than the corrosion resistance. So you'll get a very strong foam, but it might corrode. Well, that's why they anodize it, I guess. That prevents the, the corrosion, doesn't it? Grade four, it. Tita- grade 4 titanium is the strongest pure grade titanium. But it's also the least mouldable. Ah. Hmm. There you go. So okay. Gr- so grade, I mean, grade five is pretty good. You're looking at strong. I mean, they, they've obviously. I think the pro display, the glass, was strong as well. They had a, a higher oops factor. You can drop it and not worry about that as well. <laughs> um, yeah. like, the thing is, okay. So, so it's going to have larger batteries, and I, I made a big moan about that during our whilst we're watching. Remember, all, all I really care about is just give them bigger batteries so they last longer. Because my iPhone 13, if I because I'm using, uh, I've turned off wi- wireless on my phone that's at work now. The battery is dead by lunchtime on my iPhone because the battery is so so degraded. So I just wish wish they develop a technology where the batteries would last longer, even when you got your, had your phone for longer than a couple of years. Wish there's some technology so, that would keep them from degrading. It'll never happen. My regular 15 Pro needs to be charged a couple times a day over the yeah. weekends. Uh, my 15 Pro Max, uh, after a full day of what is still at about 60%. So maybe, so maybe I don't get battery anxiety with the Pro Max. Maybe I need to, rather than going back to the 16, maybe I'm then, because I don't have a Pro Max, I don't, I don't go for larger ones. But I'm finding it harder to read things on small screens. That's why I went for the port, the PS Portal, because the screen's a lot bigger. Maybe I maybe I have to go the other way. Oh, God. I'm full cut for a Pro Max this time, or next year, and seven, the 17 Pro well, Max. Well, the, the other option is you could go, f- you could have a look at the phones when they when they come out. Yeah. But if you do it this year or next year, it doesn't matter. Have a look at the iPhone 17 Plus by that time. Have a look at the display. Decide if you can live with it or not, and, yeah. you know, and uh, go for that instead. Because, look, we're, we'll, well, we'll get into the comparison in a minute. That's what I want to come on to. Um, there was also one so missing phone They also, well. said, that, well, they also said that the batteries are larger. Yeah. Um, and I wrote down question mark, question mark, question mark, best ever battery in an iPhone, but what? What does that mean? It means right? you can How run big all the is it? We're not, 
got it, basically. But I don't give a shit about that, really. No one gives a shit about that. I want to know how many milliamp hours the bloody battery's got. I don't, I'm not interested in up to 33 hours of video playback. I, I fix it to find that out for you, mate. I'm not, I'm not yeah, sure. exactly. But that's the one, that is the thing that yeah. really pisses me off, right, with Apple is that they can't just come out and say it, right? Yeah. It's not like no one's ever going to find out because literally the day after the phone's released, I fix it or whoever are going to, yeah. yeah, they're going to rip it apart and, and tell us. So why don't you just tell us up front? Um, so larger batteries, apparently. I, I'm all, I'll always go Pro Max because I just can't be bothered with charging my phone all the freaking time. Yeah. Um, AI features, blah, blah, blah. It's an A18 Pro processor. Now, what does that mean if you've got an iPhone 15 Pro? Because Apple intelligence doesn't matter. Whether you want it or not, you're going to get it if you've got an iPhone 15 yeah. um, Pro. So... Uh, the A18 Pro has 16 core neural engine, 6 core GPU, which is 20% faster than the 15, 2 times faster ray tracing, which is only really important if you play games and stuff. Um, yeah, the CPU is 15% faster, but uses 20% less power. So there which you is go. Pretty amazing. That's pretty clever. Which is pretty amazing. You've pretty got to get clever, to the engineers. They, they've done some amazing work on on, on, on the processors. This thing, this thing is have. faster than some desktop computers. You know, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, but think of your average Joe user, right? That has an iPhone Pro, whatever. What are they doing on it? They're texting. They're WhatsApping. They're on Instagram, TikTok. They're making phone calls. Uh, they're maybe taking the odd video and they're taking a shitload of photos and they're using Google all the time. Are they video editing on their phone constantly? No, not unless they're a content creator or something like that. Are they recording and editing podcasts on their phone? Probably not, etc., etc. There's so much headroom in these processors, probably even your iPhone 13 Pro, does a lot of shit pretty quick. Yeah. I'm I'm guessing you're not looking at it thinking, oh my God, this is taking forever. I'm just going to go no. make it a cup of tea and come back to it. They're so bloody fast now. Yeah. So really, it's vanity if you're going to upgrade your phone or just because, you, or, or you've just got shit loads of money and you can do it. And fair play to you. But you see, now this is where I'm going to compare the specs. Um... Because there's not really much more to say. Because when you look at the camera, it's got a 48 megapixel fusion camera, quad pixel sen- quad pixel sensor. Now, what that means is it'll get a, you'll get a faster reaction out of the camera. So, for example, I take a lot of photos of my dogs and my cats, and the little bastards will move just as you hit the shutter button. Okay. With this sensor, I'll be able to take the photo, and it will react fast enough to catch them before they move around. They missed so a trick on this. That's the- if you if you you could set a feature up on the pro so the light touch starts recording before you do the actual event and then you press the shutter to record and so it'll record before and after like the um BBC developed for their like cameras. The, or you mean like the Go- Google Pixel Pro yes basically <laughs> cuz some of these cameras can record <laughs> before you press the button can't they they know intent yeah. you know yep. These are features that, or like, I, my, I, or like any dash cam. Yeah, like the, yeah. I, I think the GoPro <laughs> might have that feature somewhere as well. So, so you yeah, know. like fucking Craig, Frederiki, and Chi, and G, and all these other people they have on their videos, right, can bang on as much as they freaking want about how incredible their processors and three nanometer and all this shit. But they they still aren't doing the, the little yeah the little things that would just make things better, right? <laughs> I mean, there are some nice things on the uh, in terms of the camera. There are some nice things like these new phot- photographic stars. I do like these. This new extra filter you could do called the professional color grading. I really like those. That I was really impressed with those and how it's not just chain- putting a color over the screen, but actually changing aspects of your of your picture. And they have some. Lo- I mean, they always do. They always have great photographs they take. That was really good. I, I really. I mean, the four K one twenty videoing. That's pretty impressive. However, how many people? I mean, I I use my iPhone 13 Pro to film a uh, school play in 4K, which means I could then I I could process and edit the the film 
Uh, I use LumaFusion on my iPad, which is a really good video editing app. But I could zoom in on particular parts of the stage after I'd filmed it because it was so 4K. So, you know, I always upload it into 1080 onto our school website because it can't cope with anything else. But it meant I had that ability to zoom in without losing quality. And that's to me how I use it. And I can record it straight to a hard drive as well because if iPhones let you do that through USB-C. Although I didn't do that with mine because I haven't got that. But you can do that. But, you know, that that's where I have used it. And I, I think that but the 4K 120... When am I ever going to use that? Because all it does is is like rinse the storage space in your phone. Unless you go for the, I mean, I, I don't know what the um, the storage options are. Is there a two terabyte option for the sixteen Pro? They never mentioned the range of storage space, did they? On it, I, I'm trying no, to I'll, 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 let's do that now. Pricing. So iPhone sixteen Pro, and I might as well do it because I'm going to get one. Um, <laughs> Right. Okay. So having shat on it. Right. So here's the feature that turned my head. It was the photographic styles. Yeah. Also, don't forget you lot. I'm I'm a bespoke tailor, menswear designer, shoe maker by day, and then I'm creating content constantly. Oh God, don't use that word. Um. So you know where there what word constantly Con- content. Con- content. Right. So the pro- you're gonna go for you're what else go for a- do you call it? Well, you know. Stuff for, well, videos, yeah, videos, videos and podcasts. If you, if, and... if you go to the Pro Max, right? Come on, Bobby, pick pick a Pro Max. Pick pick the Desert Titanium because I know you're going to get that. All right, yeah, you can you can only go up to one terabyte. But if you're going to be doing all this videoing at, at 4K 120, you're going to have to go for the one terabyte. Right. Option. Okay. Here yeah. we go. Let's let's order. A Holy phone for moly! Look at the price of that. iPhone iPhone 16 Pro Max. Yeah. Uh, Desert tin- Titanium. Yeah. Because why not? Uh, I would go for 512, not 1 terabyte. terabyte. And I'll tell you why. I will tell you why. Because Storage space I've got a device. USB... Because because the iPhone Pro has got USB-C 3. Yeah. I've got a little thumb USB-C Samsung, ironically, SSD. Yeah. And I basically plug that into my phone, take all of my big 4K videos off that, to then put onto my MacBook when I'm editing. So one terabyte is not really necessary because I'm not clogging up the space and then I'm using iCloud storage for photos and stuff. Mm. So I'd go one five twelve, but that's thirteen ninety nine, so you pay an extra two hundred quid. If you want one terabyte and you're listening, it's fifteen ninety nine. Now in actual fact that's the same price as last year. So they've not gone up. It's not a shot. That's good. No. So let's say so five twelve, so I'm at thirteen ninety nine. Yeah. And then you can do a trade-in. So let's have a look. Let's go, because I'll trade in Carolina's phone, iPhone 14 Pro. Uh, I think this, is, this is in the States, though. Are you, are you, are you using the American or the UK website? No, I'm using the British one. Right. Sure, I'll get 415 quid for that. So actually, my upgrade is 975. Right. That's still quite a lot, isn't it? That's a third of a Vision Pro, kind of. Hmm. For you, maybe. Yeah. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Sorry, that was horrible. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, yeah. The, so, so that's the thing, right? You're not tempted. You're going to wait till next year. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm tempted because I really want a Pro Max as a personal phone because I'm fed up with the battery on this regular mm-hmm. size thing. Um, but then I might move the 15 Pro Max to my personal and then get a 16 Pro Max for work. Because a question, during the day is where I'm doing most of my videos and stuff. Why don't you dual SIM a phone and have a work SIM and a home SIM? So the reason why is because on an iPhone, you can only set it up with one primary iCloud account. Oh, right, yeah. So, and, so, and then when you do an eSIM and then you put a physical SIM in so that you've got your line one and line mm-hmm. two, you will still, if people like customers of ours will have my, they'll be able to iMessage me. Yeah, I see, yeah. And a lot of them iMessage and those yeah. messages will still come through. I will still have WhatsApp business on that phone. Yeah. Those messages will still come through. So you want you want to keep can't, keep, keep keep working and home away. I just keep yeah, work and person. So when I went on holiday, and this is probably a separate podcast, um, I want to talk about this though, but I'll talk about it very quickly now. When I went on holiday, I switched my work phone off when I walked out the door and I threw it behind me. 
and it just stayed in the house. I did not take it with me. And on my personal phone, I've got nothing to do with work. None of my customers have my personal number either. Um, so having that separation is yeah. very, very important for me. Veggies. Yeah. If you're on holiday, you're on holiday. Yeah. I don't understand people that say, I've been on holiday for two weeks. I'm like, great, what did you do? Well, I got a lot of work done every day. <sighs> you weren't on holiday, were you? You were just working in a different place and you paid a lot of money to do it. Did you Dumbos. enjoy the um, slow-mo guy walking from explosion piss take that Apple did? Because I quite enjoyed that, I have to say. I did, uh, <laughs> I did find it funny, even though it was a bit cheesy. A bit on the nose, I did find it? it very funny. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. That's the only sort of, if kind you're, of humour if, if I felt if you, there was in this keynote today. Yeah. I was going to say, if anyone's watching this and you are someone who is going to make movies on this thing, um, drop a note in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about all of that. Um, the whole I, keynote I just can't, shot on iPhone 16 Pro. Yeah. But... You know, it's, they had that last year with the 15 Pro, and then it was found that there were other things that were used. It wasn't well, they were just adding the lenses. phone. They were adding lenses to the phone and things, but they, which yeah. the average Joe wouldn't have. But they were still using the phones as the, as the main, you know, recording units. I mean, I I recently got a new TV. Um, I've got I've jumped to OLED for my TV, and it looks absolutely fabulous. And this keynote looked stunning on it. it I mean, I. You know, I watched it through my Apple TV on the Apple TV events app. So it was super, super good quality, um, especially when the dude who was talking about the Apple Watch was on that sort of grassy peninsula by the by the river, wherever they were. And that grass, every, I mean, the detail was amazing. It looked really good. And that was on an iPhone. 20 years ago, you used one of the red cameras for that, for that quality. And now, maybe 10 years yeah. ago. And now they can do it on iPhone. So whether or not they use extra lenses, obviously they'll have... You saw that in the video with uh, the guy from the weekend. They had these frames around the cameras and they had extra kit. But they're still doing it, making a point of doing everything on the iPhone. And that, that's a pretty good advert, really. And when you've watched the whole keynote in that quality, that's a pretty good advert. So there yeah. will be pro users out there who, who will probably have a phone in their pocket as a backup to everything else for filming what they didn't do and the one thing i just want to mention here that i was hoping they would show was a brand new iphone se my wife needs to uh, replace her se and they haven't that i was expecting a new iphone se with some of the features the oled screen and the dynamic island you know but the, the, the cheap sort of 399 entry level phone and i'm kind of sad they didn't do that and i wonder why they might be saving it for the um october Late October Maybe. announcement. When they, they, I mean, that's probably worth us to just a uh, like a, a you know a PR email. Because sure. think it, like the iPhone SE is for people who don't really care about all the other stuff. They yeah. just want a phone, which is and wife. also for maybe older people as well. Well, I think that's my wife. You know, too. don't need to do all this other stuff. Yeah. So um, she loves so her yeah. SE. She loves it, and she just wants to doesn't want to change it. But a newer version of it would be really good, and they could do that. You know, they use the bin chips and they use all the. The fr- I mean, they probably wouldn't have the the latest kind of uh, body models that they, they'll use the still the old SE, but maybe I don't know. I just think it's a, it's a missed opportunity, but maybe they'll release it later on in the year with a PR announcement rather than a sh- I mean, event for five nine nine. You could get her an iPhone fourteen. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's true. Huh? Huh? There you go. Have a think about there that. There we go. So there oh, we go. It um, be better than my phone. That's not going to happen. Yeah. There were some other cool things on the iPhone 50, on the iPhone 16 Pro, like yeah. uh, audio mix yeah. in um, that was pretty clever. Voice notes, that's pretty exciting. Where you'll be able to actually layer tracks in yeah. voice memos, uh, and also machine learning uh, in the A18 Pro processor will help when you're filming. It will it will separate the background from speech in yeah. your videos. And then you can actually choose the sort of type of mix, whether you want it cinematic you can adjust or the levels, can't you? A bit. Studio, you can adjust all the levels. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So from that point of view, for for filmmakers, um, that could be quite cool. Um, the other thing I made a note of, John. Is that? Yeah, I mean, with with features like the um, with the uh, photo styles, for example, and all this other stuff. The nice thing is that they're kind of eliminating the need to carry so many third-party apps on your phone to do these things. Because immediately with like with the with the photo styles, the color grading, 
I can get rid of things like Snapseed and Lightroom and things like that. I can get rid of about four different apps that I use for that sort of thing. With the video stuff now, because you, while you're filming, you'll be able to use the... the um, live filters. The, no, not the live filters. Well, live, live filters is one thing, That's but really that camera, camera button, yeah. the camera button on the Pros, you'll also be able to select your aspect ratios so that you, when you're framing, whether oh, yeah. you, if you're doing like straight landscape video and you want to use rule of thirds or something that I do Instagram a lot framing. is is actually, it's important for me, if I'm recording in landscape, it's important for me to be able to frame portrait because that same video can then be edited down and, yeah. and put on TikTok and Instagram and all of that stuff. So, so those those little things are quite cool. I'm quite interested in all that sort of stuff. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I will be pre-ordering one. Oh, that's like screw it. I'll just do it. I'll just do it. Well, um, ladies and gentlemen, then, um, tune in. Tune in for the next video, which will be on the on the 20th of September, which will be Bobby's unboxing of his Desert uh, 512 gigabyte um, iPhone Pro 16 Max. We've just got to do it for the views, right? Yeah. <laughs> for the content. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then I'll return it. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do days. that. 40 days. There we go. 14 days. <laughs> Might pick up a Vision Pro at the yeah. same time, just as a just as an uh, add-on, you know. Well, I think we've um, covered that very well this evening, if you ask me. I think we've done done yeah, a good job there. Nice so, yeah. yeah, exactly. So if, if you're still here, thanks, as always. Um, we really appreciate you. Yeah. Um, and uh, are you thinking about getting any of this stuff? In fact, we should finish off kind of a bit in Bondathon style, and um, and uh, I think we should do a little round of are we buying? Right. So let's go to. Well, we can do this really quickly. Uh, Apple Watch, John. Are we buying? Okay. I don't think I will because this thing does everything yeah. I need it to. And to be fair, I don't actually look at it that often anyway. Um, okay, AirPods. Are we buying? Uh, I don't need to. I've got the Pros 2 and they're getting new features. The AirPods Max, nah. So we're happy with the software yeah. update? Yeah. iPhone, are no. we buying? No, I'm not no. buying. John's going to wait. I will say I'm not, but we know. <laughs> That's not the true. the experience <laughs> <laughs> that come pre-orders opening that I will be... Da, 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 like five minutes before um so yeah uh 16 pro max with 512 gigs thank you yeah um yeah that's it so um let us know in the comments if you're gonna be sort of if you're interested in any of that stuff um or if you're sticking with what you've already got and you're waiting it out a bit longer uh if you're an android person you're watching this and you've been having a good old laugh um, if you're let us know why. and you're still watching this, then I, I salute you. Yeah. That's a lot of patience. Give us there. hell. Yeah. Um, but thank you. Remember to like, comment, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube and if you're listening in a traditional podcast player in your earphones and your podcast listening app allows, please give us a rating and a review. It helps us to grow the channel and the pod and helps more people find us. What we've got coming up, John, we've got more Bondathon. We're almost yeah. at the end. We've got we've three got, more. We've, we've got plans for other uthons, though, haven't we, after the Bond? We do, yeah. Mm. Maybe when's the new Mission Impossible film coming out, though? Is oh, that the end of this year or next year? They've got to do it, haven't they, before Tom Cruise can't jump around anymore, really, haven't they? Although, he did it all right in the Olympics, I suppose. But um, I think yeah. he'll be jumping around till he's in his 90s. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we were talking about we were talking about Mission Impossible. Yeah. And maybe maybe we should look at the Bourne series. It doesn't have to be all no. series where people are well dressed. I'm really tempted. I'm really tempted to do a Fast and Furious as well. <sighs> oh, <laughs> that would be good. Has it ended though, or are they going to make another? No, one? no, no, no. Because ten was a, was part one of a two two part, wasn't it? And has ten part two come out yet? Not yet. No, I haven't seen ten. Well, it's cheap on iTunes and, and Google Play at the moment. You can get it for like eight quid. Get it, get it quickly whilst it's cheap. Yeah, cool. Uh, just, it I bought family. it about two years ago. Um, yeah, so there's plenty to, to, to go with those, I think. Yeah. Right, um, let's go. Um, John, you've got work to do. Um, um, thank you thank you very much, as always. Yeah, and we will see you all on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.